Let's uh, look towards the ones because Beyonce has eight Billboard Hot 100 number one songs. Who's going to be the ones this week? We're going to go through the key positions of fantasy football, tell you who will be the top scorer. Leading things off, Cynthia, who's going to be the top scoring running back? Well, it's 97 steps away. It's going to be Austin Eckler. I think it's an interesting matchup with the Miami Dolphins, a high-scoring game. And I know we've talked a lot about, oh, there's a new offensive coordinator system, but you're still going to use Austin Eckler. He's still your most valuable weapon in the red area, especially week one. I'm not saying that the passing won't be there. I'm just saying that we've seen him time and time again. Do it. Just stick with what works. Well, speaking of sticking with what works, uh, I'm going to go with Derrick Henry because, yes, there is a brand new pass target there in DeAndre Hopkins, but this is still going to be an offense that is predicated on running the ball with El Tractor Cito. Last year, <laughs> the Saints were a bottom 10 run defense. Maybe they're better, but I expect this to be a close game, a relatively low scoring game. I think both teams are going to try and pound the run, and I think Derrick Henry's going to have another big start to the season. Yeah, you could say we're all being chalky, but whatever, man. It's, I'll <laughs> it's take a Nick ones. Chubb. The last five games against the Bengals, he scored six touchdowns. Lou Anarumo's defense, I can't say this enough. They lost two safeties that, that played over 98% of snaps last season. There has to be a learning curve. This is not the guy you want to learn against. He's got 25 <laughs> fantasy points or more in three of his last five games against the Cincinnati Bengals. Let's go to the top receiver, Cynthia. Who do you think is going to be the number one pass catcher? Let's keep the chalk rolling. Justin Jefferson. <laughs> I mean, you drafted him number one for a reason, right? Well, he's also going to be your number one against Tampa Bay this week. I actually think this could surprisingly be a higher scoring game than maybe you might originally think without Tom Brady there, et cetera. But I do believe that when you look at the 29 passing touchdowns that the Bucs allowed last season, I don't know if they've necessarily address that that's tied for second most in the NFL so I think this is an area where you're just going to see Justin Jefferson prove why he's your 1.01 yeah one. I, I mean I think that's an easy way to go and you got to the homework first so that you got that one <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go Chris Olave here we go. the other the other side of that Titans Saints game the Titans secondary had a ton of issues last year and I know we all love Chris Olave to take a big step forward from what was already an outstanding rookie season this is a guy who was targeted heavily targeted on 28 percent of his routes that means Pretty much uh, three out of every 10 times he ran around, the ball was coming his direction. I don't think that changes with Derek Carr at quarterback. And maybe he's even more of an air yards guy this year. So I think he gets off to a great start against Tennessee. Of course, playing in a stadium where Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase had a lot of success in college. And those two will be playing against the Browns. And I think we have a little score fest in this one. In the last time that Jamar played the Browns, he had 28 fantasy points. Joe Burrow targeted him 15 times. I think they, think they <laughs> might go for that uh, again. I like that you just like let that marinate. Just let it sit. 15, 15 times. times. That's, yes. that's a lot of balls for Mark Chase. <laughs> right. We go from the receivers now to, to the quarterbacks. Who's going to be the number one quarterback? I took your guy. Oh. I got to the homework first. So <laughs> I got to pick Lamar Jackson against Houston. I'm looking at Houston. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Sneaky Houston is good at pressuring quarterbacks. But you know what happens when you are pressured? What's you that? run. Ah. And you know what happens with Lamar Jackson when he's pressured? He runs past people. Yeah, he runs <laughs> way past people and into the end zone. So when I'm looking at Lamar Jackson against the Texans front, again, they're a good pressure front. I'm not saying anything mean about their pressure front. I'm just saying that Lamar Jackson is very good. I'm excited to see this offense. I think we're going to see a lot of versatility here, meaning I think there's going to be at least two touchdowns through the air and probably one on the ground, too. I'm very curious to see this offense this year. But if we're going chalk, call me Crayola because this is the chalkiest chalk that ever chalked. Patrick <laughs> Mahomes against the Lions. I mean, I could sit here and tell you all sorts of stats and this and that. Or I could just say, hey, man, it's Patrick Mahomes. Yep. And he's going against the Lions. And yeah, their defense will probably be better than it was last year, but it's not going to suddenly be a world beating defense. This is going to be potentially a score fest, a track meet. And I expect Patrick Mahomes, by the way, who's had three or more touchdown passes in every week one game for the last five years, what? to kind of keep that track mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to assuage some concerns here because I know a lot of people drafted Jalen Hurts early and they're saying, oh, he's playing the Patriots defense. Here's my theory. The last few games against quarterbacks that can run, Josh Allen had three touchdowns, two touchdowns before that. Justin Fields had two scores. Lamar had five touchdowns, four passing, one rushing. I'm looking back. I think the Patriots feasted on quarterbacks that could not run last year. Jalen is healthy. He's had some time off. I think he's just fine this week. And I love his O-line. 
Yes. Very, very good. Also, got some talent at tight end. Let's give you the top scoring tight end. I'm going to go with the guy, though, that is the dark horse, and I can say very dark horse, to knock Chelsea off the perch at number one, and it's Darren Waller, simply because the Giants are trying out this really new, interesting theory at wide receiver where it's going to collect slot guys like they were Pokemon cards. Uh, in the meantime, you've got a big target there in the middle of the field in Darren Waller, and this was a guy who was a top-level tight end when he was healthy with the Raiders. Health has been an issue the last couple of years, but if he stays on the field, I think he's going to get plenty of looks from Daniel Jones, especially when they get down near the end zone. Yes, and he's not a... I, I've always wanted... I was disappointed to find out the dark horse wasn't an actual dark horse. <laughs> just like a Vanta black horse what? that was silhouetted. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's a gambling reference. Anyway, we'll give it to people. It, it, what? Looking, I've got Mark Andrews as my tight end one. Cynthia had Lamar as the quarterback one. We've talked about the offense changing and being different. One thing that's not going to change is these two guys. The, he's gonna, he had four, point, four games with 20 or more points. He and Lamar are on the field at the same time. He's going to get points. Book it. It, it was a, it's a, The etymology is a horse that people didn't have a lot of information on, so the horse is in the dark. Uh -huh. It's it's not like... Oh, I, now so I thought that was the, like... It's more the people were in the dark. Yeah. Right. You know. the, Got it. It gives, the, it gives the illusion that there is this horse that can't be seen. It maybe has red eyes. I thought eyes it was like a like, weird like shadow horse. Yeah, yeah like that would have been... That <laughs> this horse is darkness itself. Those yeah. are the ones...